Global sustainability. What exactly does that mean? Sustainability means the art of conducting business from a holistic perspective with priorities lying in the recycling of nature's resources, maintaining a fertile planet, and striving to live in harmony with all of humanity and with all forms of life on this planet. However, we are not currently living in a global environment that is able to support itself, that has longevity, that is sustainable. Lester Brown is the president of the Earth Policy Institute in Washington. In his book, Plan B, he spends the first half citing fact after fact about deforestation, soil erosion, population issues like starvation and malnutrition and disease, as well as lack of fresh water, dirty forms of energy like coal and oil, pollution, climate change, and the list goes on. He tells us stuff that we know we already know, but he uses facts to tell us where we stand, and quite frankly, it's a sight for sore eyes. In the vast diversity of issues he writes about, there remained one constant. Every issue he mentioned was connected to all of the others in one way or another. In fact, everything on this planet, every one of us, is connected in one way or another. If we expect to change this path we are on, from dismal to flourishing, we have to start with something that will have the most effect, something that influences everything something that will make the biggest change. And that is energy. Energy is the single most important issue to be discussed because it has a powerful impact in every other issue we face. Energy is embedded in everything. Health, the economy, the ability to defend yourself and keep yourself from being suppressed, as well as the ability to provide your family with food, water, shelter, and warmth. To have a decent standard of life, you require cheap, available energy. However, what is both impressive and alarming is that the planet is currently in an energy crisis. How we get energy today has some serious problems, and it's scary. We fight wars over energy. I know, I was in one. However, in the second half of his book, he writes about how we can liberate ourselves from this energy crisis, and it's beautiful. He advocates free energy systems like wind, solar, hydroelectric, and geothermal, which again is beautiful. But with the rush to electric vehicles and the growing population, they alone are not going to be enough. If we are able to supply even 30% of our energy needs from renewable sources by 2020, that would be a miracle. The good news is, however, I believe in miracles. I believe nothing is impossible. I believe that we can supply 100% of the world's energy needs from free, clean, renewable sources by 2020. So, with such grand optimism, what more can we do? We have to turn to the scientific community. We have to ask them, please, go back to your notes, go back to your experiments, try to see if there isn't another way. As it turns out, there is another way. New discoveries have been made, and they have revealed some amazing things. The only thing is that the discoveries made in particle physics are not being recognized in electrical engineering. The electron theory that has gotten us as far as we are today is priceless. But its time has passed. It is time to usher in a new era. It is time to implement new, updated models that will dramatically change the way we think about energy. The concept of free energy is nothing new. What free energy means is that there is a source of energy, say the sun for example, and the only thing we have to do is build a system that is able to use that energy, like a solar panel. From there on out, the energy we use from that system is free. The same is true for wind, geothermal, and hydro. These are all forms of free energy. What is exciting is that particle physics has discovered a new source of energy, and it is cleaner and more abundant than we can possibly comprehend. It is called vacuum energy. Vacuum energy is energy contained within the fabric of space-time in which we exist. It is the Planck scale, 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, very, very small, and yet it is everywhere, and it is infinite. There is enough energy inside the space of this empty cup to boil all of the oceans in the world. This is a fact well known to the scientific community, and was, for example, a favorite quote of Nobel Prize winning physicist Richard Feynman. 
The only problem is that electron theory in electrical engineering does not acknowledge that such an energy reservoir even exists. How could this be? Classical electron theory views an atom as though it were a solar system. However, an atom lives in a different realm than a solar system. It's on a different level of creation, trillions of billions times smaller. If we view an atom as a solar system, we will not see the whole picture. Modern electron theory views an atom from a different perspective. In particular, the model sees an electron as a polarization of the vacuum state. Albert Einstein showed us that E equals mc squared. Energy is matter, in one form or another, always. An electron is a tiny ball of energy. It is not a piece of matter floating in space. An electron is a negatively charged particle that radiates energy, photons, in every direction, never stopping. An electron has both infinite charge and infinite energy, energy that is supplied directly from the vacuum. Virtual particles are tiny forces bubbling in and out of existence at unfathomable rates. These virtual particles connect the electron to its energy source, in the process creating a dipole, a flow of energy. This energy has been flowing through every electron in the universe since the beginning of time. It can be likened to the life force of Mother Nature herself. If we truly strive to live in accord with nature, to live sustainably, we must listen to what nature is telling us, we must see what nature is showing us, and we must do what nature does. A permanent magnet that we can make does just this. A permanent magnet channels real electromagnetic energy straight out of the vacuum, perpetually. The problem is, we never figured out how to use this source of free energy, until now. In March of 2002, a U.S. patent was issued for the Motionless Electromagnetic Generator. The MEG has produced up to a hundred times more power than was input by extracting energy from the vacuum. The MEG has been independently constructed and its over-unity performance independently replicated by other researchers. Vacuum energy is a real source of energy. It needs not sunlight nor wind. It is present here on Earth, on the Moon, and even in the Andronima galaxy, and it will never run out. Well, that then begs the question. If we know about this, then why doesn't everyone know about this? The experimental proof has been around for over 60 years, but yet still, no one is talking about it. Why? It is because free energy means abundance. And a change of this magnitude, a worldview change from scarcity to abundance, takes time. It takes generations. The good news is, it's our generation now. And we can see that currently, the world makes little to no sense, and we are going to fix that. We have no plans on getting stuck in the same business as usual trap that got us into this mess. No more oil, no more coal. Free energy is a real thing. We are at the tipping point of a paradigm shift. Galileo revolutionized our view of the world when he showed us that the Earth was not the center of the universe. I am saying free, unlimited, clean energy is a real thing and it will revolutionize everything. We live in a continuum of hindsight, learning from the past and growing. It's time we take what we have learned and use it to liberate mankind from suffering.